While making videos for this channel, I often have to stalk a lot of old Roblox profiles, and while doing that, I've seen a lot of avatars that look something like this. A no-clothes, blocky character with no hats except for a thick, hardcover book right on top of their head. How strange, one might think. Why would they keep a book on their head? How are they going to read it like that? Well, as it turns out, the reason why they all look the same is because their hats all use this mesh. Book Mesh 2. Book Mesh 2 has deep roots in Roblox history, and it's one of the few meshes from the 07 era that still gets retextured to this day. If you're a frequent purchaser of Roblox toys, you've definitely seen it floating around before. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's take a look at the history of Book Hats on Roblox. It all started with this blog post from Shedletsky, the founder of Roblox, titled Robloxia Goes Back to School. At the time, Roblox had already cemented itself as a game intended largely for kids, and Shedletsky knew it. So on September 15th, 2007, to celebrate the end of summer vacation, he initiated the textbook sale. From September 15th to October 5th, Roblox would release 12 hats that looked like books you would find in school at random points in time for a certain amount of time. They would all be 15 Robux, but the more obscure the subject of the book was, the less often it would sell, so the harder it would be to obtain. For example, the reading textbook was the second most commonly obtained book, with 290 sales, while the least purchased book, Finnegan's Wake, was only purchased 57 times, and is apparently considered one of the most difficult to understand books ever written, with passages such as, uh... Anyway, in order from most to least purchased, the textbooks were Math, Reading, The Recess Codex, shout out to the schools who taught recess as a subject, Geography, Learn to Program C++, Biology, Chemistry, I Lawrus, everyone's favorite piece of literature, Music Theory, Economics, Comics, Quantum Chromodynamics for Dummies, not even gonna try to understand that one, and of course, Finnegan's Wake. The total cost for everything was 180 Robux, which was actually a decently large sum of money back then, and for the 39 players who had enough money and time to seek out and buy all 12 textbooks, Roblox had an extra prize in store, called the Teapot Tome. It's a reference to the Utah Teapot, which is considered somewhat of a default 3D model in some 3D modeling softwares, similar to how when you're coding in Roblox Studio, the script already has the default print hello world function inside it. 39 copies would actually make it the rarest book hat ever made. Made. So it's a little sad to see that right after that, Roblox brought it on sale for just 137 Robux. And then also put it back on sale during the 2016 President's Day sale for just 100 Robux. Oh well, it's still a cool hat. Now that may seem like an unremarkable run-of-the-mill mini sale, but it did turn out to have a pretty strong impact on Roblox history for two reasons. Firstly, over the years, some of the textbooks have actually become limited. The reading textbook, geography textbook, learn to program C++ textbook, chemistry textbook, and the I Lawrus book are all very classic limiteds nowadays, even though none of them have any value. Secondly, this event was the entire reason why book hats were introduced in the first place. The mesh they used would go on to be crucial to early places that need Needed to include bookshelves, since Roblox still wasn't allowing people to upload their own meshes yet. And as you'll see going forward, these hats would become integral parts of early events, and this one random textbook sale held on the 15th of September 2007 would be the first step to all of that. Chronologically, after summer vacation, what do most kids look forward to the most? That's right, it's Halloween. And what did Roblox players get for Halloween? If you answered a whole lot of reading, you would be correct. Exactly one week from Halloween, Roblox published another book, called the Necrobloxicon. As a horror buff, this is definitely one of my favorite book hats ever released. The cursed vibes are intense. It's meant to be a parody of the Necronomicon, which is supposed to be an ancient book that is, quote, bound in human flesh and inked in blood, a book filled with spells to raise the dead and summon ancient creatures. With that in mind, its original price of 1,111 ticks, or around 111 Robux, seems a little cheap. The other book they released was Halloween Lore Book 1. Now, right away, you might notice that the description of this hat is more than a little cryptic. It reads, Legend tells of 13 Halloween lore books, which together reveal the location of the Crimson Cat's Eye, an artifact of great power long thought to be lost forever. This is the first lore book and opens the way forward. If you scrutinize the item's page a little more, you might notice some text on the back of the book, which reads, Return to Haunted Hill. From all of this information, players were supposed to figure out that they needed to buy this book, which cost 15 Robux at the time, find the user Haunted Hill, and visit their game. As it turned out, that step of buying this book would be absolutely necessary, because there was a script inside that game that made it so that players that didn't own this hat would just spawn into an empty grass field. That actually made this event completely undoable for people who didn't have Builder's Club, because back then, the Halloween Lorebook 1 hat was a Builder's Club exclusive item. But if you had Builder's Club, bought this hat, and figured out that you needed to visit Haunted Hill's place all in the span of a day, you would have the privilege of taking part in in 
what would come to be known as the Halloween Treasure Hunt of 2007. Haunted Hill's Place actually turned out to be a slightly modified version of Shedletsky's classic Haunted Hill game from 2006. It had 13 Halloween lore books hidden around the map, each marked with a unique number, 1 through 13, in Roman numerals. They weren't actually real hats themselves, but if you found all 13, you'd be given a unique code and told to message Haunted Hill with that code to be awarded the grand prize of this event, the Crimson Cat's Eye. And it was worth trying to complete this, because nowadays the Crimson Cat's Eye is a limited item with 100k Rollamon's value. Now at this point, I would love to show you guys a complete walkthrough of the original place and the locations of all 13 books, but unfortunately, at some point, Roblox copy-locked the map, and then moderated the place and also terminated Haunted Hill. I could only find one genuine looking copy of the original place, so thank you to GamerYor for your Halloween lorebook hunt game. It really helped a lot. Now, if there are any time travelers from 2007 watching, pay attention, because you're about to see how to get 100k value for absolutely free. Or you could have bought it for 50k ticks, but that's no fun. Let's see where those books were. Book 1 was lying on top of a pile of dirt next to a stone column in the basement cave area of the house. Book 2 was in a corner made by the walls of the rooftop access platform above the red room. Book 3 was nestled on the side of the chimney. To get it, you had to climb up onto the roof and drop down onto it from there. Book 4 was tucked into a small nook formed by a rooftop alcove and the main part of the roof. You can't really see the number because of how it's placed, but you're gonna have to trust me on this one. It's Book 4. Book 5 was unfair. I checked everywhere for this book for literal hours. It's not a very big map, and I've been to identical versions plenty of times before while looking for badges, and yet after searching every nook and cranny of this entire place for hours, I still got nothing. I was about ready to write this one off as the one that got away, but before doing that, I asked some of my friends for help, and they found it wedged behind the tiny gap between the fireplace and the wall. Turns out that the inside of the fireplace used to have collisions off, but at some point, someone turned them on. So now the book tries to spawn inside the fireplace, and instead gets forced backwards into a spot where no one can get it. But hey, at least we found it. Anyway, they shoved book 6 next to a dresser in the gray bedroom. I'm pretty sure book 7 is supposed to spawn inside the refrigerator, but when I found it, it had been forced out and underneath it. Book 8 was behind a pumpkin in the pumpkin patch. Book 9 was floating in midair in the bottomless pit entrance to the cave basement. You had to fall on top of it just right to pick it up. Book 10 was the second hardest. It was in the witch's secret room, which is hidden behind a fake wall in the cave basement. Those who are really familiar with this map are pretty well aware of this room's existence, but since I hadn't been here in a while, I had kind of forgotten about it, and spent a couple hours walking around aimlessly without much luck. Eventually, I did end up rediscovering it, but unfortunately, someone seems to have disabled the witch's brew big head effect, and when I stood in the famous cauldron, nothing happened, but at least I found book 10. Book 11 was tucked under a low part of the roof in the attic of the house. Book 12 was on top of the door's overhang. You had to drop down from the roof again to get that one. And finally, book 13 was just sitting right out in the open in a patch of trees. So the Crimson Cat's Eye was already good enough of a deal, but what if I told you that they made both of the books I just mentioned limited as well? Yes, that's right. The Necrobloxicon and the Halloween Halloween Lorebook 1 are both limited items, and while neither of them have any value, they're still pretty coveted. So all in all, maybe 2007 wasn't the worst Halloween after all. After Halloween 2007, we didn't really get any major events involving book hats until almost a year later. However, there were still three solo book hats that Roblox sprinkled in there throughout that time period. First was Fight Lux, The Life and Times of a Builderman. There's not much to say about this one, except that to promote its release, Shadaletsky uploaded the transcript to a fake interview between Builderman and a mysterious journalist called Mrs. X to the Roblox blog, which basically reads like an FAQ page in disguise, but the hat looks decent, so I'm okay with that. Then we had the Net Hack pages, which were awarded for reporting bugs and exploits to Roblox in 2008. This was essentially the grandfather to Roblox's current QA tester program, which is made up of people who volunteer their time to test for bugs and exploits in official Roblox experiences. Anyone who has this hat is a true OG. Finally, to celebrate July 7th, aka LOL Day, Clockwork uploaded an interesting little hat called the LOL Cat Bible. He actually uploaded it on July 2nd, and you could get it for free on that day if you had the word LOL somewhere on your Roblox profile. If you didn't though, you could still purchase it for 707 ticks, or 70 Robux, on the day of July July 7th itself. Now, one of the pitfalls of researching things from 2007 is that eventually, if you do it long enough, you're going to encounter a cat meme. It can't be avoided. But personally, I think that enough time has passed for us to be able to not cringe at those kinds of memes, but instead laugh at how simple internet culture was back then. But even still, I think the fact that the description for this item doesn't exist anymore might be for the best. The next 
event involving book hats would take place in September of 2008, and it was called the School Project Contest. It was another event to celebrate the end of summer vacation, and this time it would be a lot more work than just buying 12-15 Robux hats. For this event, you actually had to send Roblox a school project or homework that you did, where you used Roblox to help you in some way. Specifically, they wanted any pictures, videos, or other files of the project, a description of what the project was and how Roblox was used in it, and if students wanted, comments about the project from teachers or parents as a bonus. If your project was deemed good enough, you would receive 500 Robux and literally every single book hat published in the catalog up until the starting date of the contest. Everyone who submitted an entry would also receive a sort of participation trophy, a new book hat called Robux, How Education Determines Future Success, regardless of if they won or not. Throughout the contest period, Roblox published several blog posts full of impressive entries that they wanted to show off. I won't go through all of them, but here are some of the highlights. First up is Stoneblood. He says, In art class, I was required to construct a three-dimensional project for the end of the year. I was stumped on how I should complete the project. I decided I'd make some form of abstract or modern art. I realized I could use the computer for my project. I tried designing my model on paint, but I just wasn't good at it. I got bored and decided to play a little bit of my favorite game, Roblox. After a bit of building, I noticed that I could design my project on Roblox. I successfully made the models my teacher was asking for and got an A+. He includes a direct quote from his teacher, who says, Great work! Your models contain a lot of texture and are very abstract. I included this one because I admire his ability to pass off something that looks like it could have been made in Roblox Studio in about a minute as an actual art project. Artis Ryle used Roblox for what seems to be a college-level physics course. He says, We were looking at simple harmonic motion. We'd been spending a few lessons looking at simple harmonic motion in a spring. We'd been having to look at a spring because it's hard to look at the displacement, acceleration, and velocity of a pendulum. So I went into Roblox and made a pendulum, and made it print off the position of the pendulum over a course of 10 seconds, every 0.05 seconds. I then put this into Excel to get a graph. Later I made a script to actually play a graph in-game. My physics teacher was impressed by the application of Roblox for motion physics experiments. I included this one because I am genuinely impressed with what he's describing here. I really wish he had included a video of his project in action because it sounds really impressive, especially for 2008 Roblox standards. I don't even really understand what his project was about, but I really hope he got an A on it. And finally, we have another physics project, this time from Fireball Mario. He made a Rube Goldberg machine, and thankfully he did make a video of it, but it's kind of long, so I'll play it over his project description. He says, We were supposed to make a Rube Goldberg machine, and I didn't have any supplies to make one, so I made it in Roblox. A Rube Goldberg machine is a machine that does easy tasks in a difficult way. This machine pours bowling pins into a container. I used the power of scripting and building to make this. The scripting parts were kind of hard, but it was also fun, just from the excitement I had when creating it. Very fun! It was the best science project I had to do. I got to show it off to the whole class. Nearly all of them liked it. Now obviously everything here is perfection, from the squiggly bounce platform having a seizure on the ramp, to the pixelated red ball labeled Wee. But I am a little concerned about this kid's school system if this was the best science project he ever got to do. Roblox is fun and all, but when I was in elementary school, we got to do a project where we made toast in a heat box that we made ourselves out of nothing but wood, cotton, and tinfoil. And I've got to imagine that that was at least a little more impressive than this. book hat to be published would be released on February 28th, 2009. In a blog post announcing some new heads and faces, Shedletsky tacked on the announcement of a new hat called Cheeseburger the Complete History. His explanation for the new hat went as follows. I was hanging out at Mike's minigame world, and General Cheese mentioned he had a great retexture of the book mesh, which I had happened to randomly see on YouTube earlier that morning. Now you can has Cheeseburger. This is a first edition printing, and may end up becoming quite a rare book. Now bad 2007 humor aside, this would actually turn out to be a very important announcement, because it would mark the first of a slew of user-created book hat retextures that would be published over the course of the next several months. The next week, another blog post was published called Roblox Gets Medieval, which was meant to announce a few new hats and faces that would work well in medieval games. And slapped right in the middle of that was a new hat called Reese McBlox's Guide to Instant Sunshine. According to Shetaletsky, Roblox put it to a vote in the forum, and about 90% of people thought it would be interesting to release one user-made book per week. These books will be limited release and collectible. And with that announcement, hundreds of Robloxians everywhere started dusting off my Microsoft Paint and making some of the weirdest book hat retextures known to man, many of which are still available on the Roblox library today. And true to their word, exactly one week later, Roblox published a new user-created book called Fish is Our Friends, Not Food. I'm gonna assume Roblox didn't care about copyright infringements at the time because this book is absolutely caked in clip art ripped from Google Images. That just adds to the classic vibes. The next weekly book was Muffin Cat, King of Muffins, which got published two weeks after the last one. 
So Roblox was only able to keep their promise of weekly user-created books for three whole weeks. Great job, guys. Now yes, it is another cat meme, but at least it doesn't have that weird I can't has cheeseburger language from the lolcat bible. And actually, the more I look at this book, the more I see that it kind of bears a resemblance to some of the surreal memes that we know and love today. So I guess Four Musketeers was really ahead of his time. So I guess Four Musketeers was really ahead of his time. Really ahead of After that, Roblox seemed to go back to their weekly promise, and one week later they published The Tale of Epic Duck. Now while researching this hat, I came across a forum archive where the maker of this retexture, JoeyMan123, was showing off his new hat and asking for feedback, and no one ever replied. I found that really sad, because it is a decent looking book, so if one of you guys ever runs into him in a game, make sure to compliment him on The Tale of Epic Duck. He deserves it. Anyway, Roblox then took another two week break before publishing the next book, The Roblox Joke Book. So I guess at this point, Roblox felt sort of guilty for taking so much break time, because after the joke book, the next book was published just three days later, and called Dragons of the Legends. It was actually created by Range Malud, who would later go on to change his name to Yorius and become an extremely famous developer and UGC creator. Needless to say, his work has definitely improved since 2009. Right after that, Roblox took another two week break before publishing what is probably the best titled book in this series, Ye Briny Pirate Lore Tome of Doom. Desperately trying to get back on their commitment, Roblox published the next book, A Shot in the Dark, a week later. I'm not quite sure what this book is supposed to be themed after, the description says it's an intense sci-fi thriller, but when you google search a shot in the dark book, so what the heck, Toazuku? After publishing the vague sci-fi thriller, there was nothing but radio silence from the weekly books program for almost two months. Maybe Roblox got tired of publishing books every couple weeks, maybe there was some drama around the program, or maybe people just stopped making books for two months. We can't really say. Regardless, on July 22nd, out of nowhere, Roblox published a book titled Adventures on the High Seas and in the Pool, where they announced some new summer-themed items that included, among items like Mrs. Tentacles and this swim cap thing, Mr. Tentacles' Guide to the Sand and the Sea. Unfortunately, I don't really think we can trust the information in here because Roblox admitted in the description that Mr. Tentacles really had no involvement in this project whatsoever and it was ghostwritten by Ewat. So unless this guy knows a whole lot about the sand and the sea, it looks like this is nothing more than a bunch of propaganda. How shameful. The last user made book ever made for regular purchasing purposes and not for an event was Reese McBlox's Diary, which was published nearly a year after Tentacles in March of 2010. Roblox also posted a model and texture for a key shaped hat to the official Roblox account around the same time as the diary upload, but never ended up making it an actual hat. It's speculated that if a user owned both the diary and the key, it would unlock a brand new hat for them. But since the key was never published, we may never know. The diary can actually still be purchased for 67 Robux though, so maybe one day, Roblox will publish the key and finally allow the secrets of Reese McBlox's diary to be revealed. So in total, Roblox's weekly book hat program got 11 books published, and unfortunately most of them are now off sale, except for Reese McBlox's diary, which is still on sale, and Cheeseburger the Complete History, Fish is Our Friends Not Food, and The Tale of Epic Duck, which are all unvalued limited items. However, even even though they're mostly gone, these books should not be forgotten. The user-created book program was essentially the great-grandfather to our modern UGC accessory program. Cheeseburger the Complete History is known as the first user-created item retexture ever published, and eventually a whole program would be created on Roblox for just item retextures made by users, which would go on to inspire users to create their own items, and before you knew it, the UGC craze would take hold. Many skilled 3D modelers and artists have probably gotten their start from things like the retextures program, the ability for players to upload their own meshes to Roblox Studio, and the UGC clothing and accessories communities, and it all started with one fateful meeting between the founder of Roblox and a guy dressed like a block of cheese on the 27th of February, 2009. At this point, the uploads of book hats were starting to slow down a lot, and it was August 23rd, 2011, nearly a year and a half later, when we started to see signs of them again. Two book retextures were uploaded, one called Roblox for Noobs, with two zeros in place of O's, and one simply called Darkseed the Fallen. And no, that's not a copy name. This one has a colon, this one doesn't. Completely different. There was actually a third one that got uploaded as well, called Harry Bloxer and the Scripter's Brick, but it was never published due to copyright issues. I kind of wish it could have replaced Back to School for Noobs, because I like Harry
Harry Potter a lot more than school, obviously. But sadly it didn't. Maybe one day, if I ever get UTC access, I'll sneakily upload this hat myself. Hopefully you guys won't tell anyone. Anyway, as it would turn out, not just anyone would be able to get these books. You had to have been really good at building specifically building summer-themed places. You see, these two books were prizes in one of the many building contests that Roblox conducted around that time, this one being the Build Your Summer Vacation Building Contest. I won't go deep into how these contests worked, because honestly, I could make a whole video just about them, but I will give you a basic rundown. Players would have a certain amount of days to make a place themed after the description on the contest's main page. After all the entries were in, people would try to get voting accuracy points by liking and playing the places they thought would be ranked highest. Then, Roblox staff members would give each place a rating, and contestant players would receive prizes to depending on how high their rating was. Players could also receive prizes for having a certain amount of voting accuracy points, and the more highly rated places they played and liked, the more voting accuracy points they would have. In this particular building contest, since it was happening at the tail end of summer, the goal was to recreate a fun place that you went to during your summer vacation. There were three prizes to be obtained here. The first was the math textbook. Not the same math textbook as the one from 2007, but a more updated version that unfortunately didn't use the book match to match, so I won't be talking about it, except to say that it was awarded to all contestants with a rating of over 1,550. A much cooler prize was our first book retexture, Dark Seed the Fallen, which was awarded to players who got a rating of over 1,850. This would probably be the rarest book retexture out there, with only about 40 to 45 copies, if it weren't for the fact that at some point, a glitch apparently happened that allowed this thing to be purchased for one ticks for a short period of time, bringing the total amount of copies to 310. Still decently rare, but less so now. The final prize was Roblox for Noobs, which was awarded for having a voting accuracy score of over 90%. Based on this voting leader's page, I would estimate that this ended up having about 25 to 35 copies in total, making it probably the rarest book hat ever made, unless it was ever part of a sale that no one documented. I really wish I still had access to the item owner's API, but I guess UGC creators feel differently. Now, I was actually pretty surprised at the amount of entries to this contest that were still open after all these years. If you watch my Ice Crown video, you probably remember that out of the 134 winning places I found, only a very small fraction of them were unprivated. Since then, I've been looking at a lot of other building contests for possible future videos, and in a lot of them, I could only find one or two playable entries. But for this contest, out of the 20 entries on display here, I was able to play 12 of them. That's a little over half, which in terms of ancient building contests is good like, really good. However, after playing those 12 entries, I became very aware of a pretty big problem with most of them. I'll play one of them now. Let's see if you can tell what I'm talking about. Okay, chill out and have fun. Chill summer vacation. Sounds pretty chill. Let's get into it. Wait a minute. This isn't summer themed. Where's all the summer? I've even got a pumpkin. Well, this sucks. Yep, they kept it open all right, but completely wiped it clean. After doing some research, I'm pretty sure the reason why they did this is because back then, players without Builders Club weren't allowed to have more than one place on their account at a time. So that makes sense, but why reopen your place if it's just an empty base plate now? It's beyond me. Maybe they were just being stupid kids, I don't know. And it wasn't just the chill summer vacation place either. So many other entries were either made completely empty, repurposed for another contest, or turned into some other game entirely. Anyway, after reviewing all the places and excluding the ones that were empty or overwritten by something else, I narrowed it down to three places that were still open and themed appropriately. One was ranked 14th place with a rating of 1,895, one was 11th with a rating of 1,908, and one was actually first place with a rating of 2,008. So I think it's safe to say that what we're about to see is some of the best building work that the Robloxians of 2011 had to offer. Let's take a look at what they built. The Epic Summer Vacation, plus 4 or 5 if played, by Midnight Sunrise. A place originally entered in the Build Your Summer Vacation contest? I think I already knew that, but thank you for telling me. Alright, this is looking pretty summery. Don't think I've ever seen orange palm trees before. Ooh, it's the beach. Incredibly flat umbrella over here. Okay. Uh, I think that my legs are not supposed to be where they are right now. What is under the tape? Under the table, it says, Oshi was here. I'm gonna assume that says Yoshi, probably, but maybe it was just a guy named Oshi who happened to be strolling around town. Oh, it's some people. Hello, sir. Those hater blockers look very nice on you. Uh, can you please stop kicking me? Thank you. Oh, you need to get that checked out. I think you are missing a face. That's probably a bad sign, dude. And you're missing legs. I, I, there are some people who, oh, there's his legs. All right, after seemingly killing about three people, I think I should probably get out of here. Very patriotic blanket, as you can see. Uh, let's take a look at some of these buildings. All right, this looks like a pretty cool house. Let's see what's in it. 
nothing. Nothing. Guys, I don't think they bought any furniture for this house. It's a pretty smart business idea, though. You know, you can have a really good house as long as you never buy any furniture or food or literally anything to put in it. I guess they splurged on a hot tub, though. All right. I mean, this looks like a pretty cool summer vacation in my book. I'm going to say 8 out of 10. Nice job. Epic Super Fantastic Hangout with Maximum Fun by XX Contest X. X. And 100% free models. Fun fact, this free model place got me a rare book hat. Uh, I don't like the sound of that. I hope it's not 100% free models. Uh, let's see if it is. Alright, we got the same palm trees again. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it th this beach? This beach is the exact same beach as the last one. Gu guys, I think this place might be 100% free models. Oh my god. How was this place a winner? Wait a minute. Then that means that the last place was free models too. What? What is going- what is going on? Uh, I don't think I remember these bleachers. I, I guess they're another free model. Mr. XX Contest X. Little scoundrel. At least these guys look happy. Uh, their- their shirts look a little drunk though. Oh. These jet skis are new, I think. Let's test one out. All right, we are not going anywhere. Uh, and we're starting to lag a lot. I think there's too much water on screen. Yeah, I'm gonna have to reset it. Guys, I think we killed the jet ski. Rest in peace, my man. Man, everything is copied. I, I think this entire map might be just one big free model. That's like the only explanation I can think of for this. That hat over there is a hat called Summer Hat, I believe, it's a limited hat. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not, it's not new either. It's just another free model, I think. Everything here is free models. He wasn't lying. Uh, well, I'm obviously gonna have to give this one a 0 out of 10 for, uh, plagiarism. Uh, th th this is weird. Okay, so those last two places were, you know, pretty disappointing because of them being the same game and all. But, uh, this one is the very first place winner, so I'm expecting nothing but good things from this. It's called... Epic Summer Vacation, asterisk, plus two or plus five, if play, asterisk, uh, by the famous developer Te Epic Ponzers, and its description is a place originally entered in the Build Your Summer Vacation contest. Again, I know. So, let's get into it. Again, expecting nothing but good things. Let's see what it's like. Oh, God, I am in the void. <laughs> uh... Cool. Ah, uh, god damn it! What? It's the same map again. <laughs> Why? How did this win? It's literally just a free model. I don't understand. Uh, maybe they added something new into it. At least let's let's check it out. All right, we got some people here. This noob is pretty big. Oh god, my hair has been ripped off. How did this happen? <laughs> That's the weirdest glitch I've ever seen. What? I couldn't get out. Uh, I'm back in the void. How did this... This is worse than the 14th place one. There's barely anything changed about this. Yeah, so basically every winning entry used this free model Oceanside City place, added a few other free models in there to make it slightly unique, and called it a day. If you look at the old thumbnails, you can see that literally every winning place except three of them used this map. And those three that didn't still seem to have used a different free modeled map. I think this must be why Roblox eventually discontinued building contests. Because free models were allowed, it seemed like eventually everyone started putting no effort into their entries whatsoever and just relying on tactics like eye-catching thumbnails and fake promises of more voting accuracy in the title in order to get more attention. That's why it's no surprise to me that when they brought them back one last time for a robot building contest, they didn't consider any free modeled entries for the winner slots. So maybe most of the people who won this Dark Seed book didn't really deserve their win, but it's at least a cool looking hat that they should be hyped to own. After 2011, we didn't see nearly as high of a saturation of book hats as we did in the early 2000s, and considering the fact that Roblox seems to want to slowly stop producing hats themselves and let the community take over, production will most likely only slow down even more from here. However, even though it's been slow, they've kept the book hats going. During the 2013 Labor Day sale, a big blowout item sale that took place on Labor Day of 2013, two book hats were released, Back to School for Noobs, again with two zeros instead of O's, and The History of Roblox Volume 1. The former cost 100 Robux and then went limited, but like all of the other books, it's not currently 
valued. And the latter is actually still purchasable today for just 30 Robux. We haven't gotten a history of Roblox Volume 2 yet though, and it's been 9 years, so someone had better get on that because there's probably a lot of writing to do. The next book hat was released in 2014, as part of an event called Roblox University 2014. Originally, Roblox University was going to be a standalone website full of tutorials to teach people how to build script and generally make good games. But at some point, Roblox decided to scrap that idea and turn it into an event where people could watch tutorials on YouTube and then go to a special quiz game where they could earn prizes for completing quizzes. It was basically the grandfather to those creator challenges that Roblox likes to conduct every once in a while, except in Roblox University, there were no templates to follow, only the tutorials. There were two game types that you could learn how to make from those tutorials, a racing game or a murder mystery game. Completing the quiz for the racing game tutorials would win you the Roblox U Racing Hill, and completing the quiz for the murder mystery game would win you the Roblox U Hood, which looks insanely cool, but makes no sense whatsoever. Looks like what would happen if an ancient evil spirit possessed a frat boy, but it's honestly a vibe. Alongside these tutorials, Roblox released several items themed after Roblox University that you could buy with Robux, including the Roblox U Handbook, which remains on sale to this day for 100 Robux. Skipping a year ahead, in 2015, out of the blue, Roblox randomly published another book hat retexture made by Index Files called Tale of Epic Duck 2 The Redux. I see what you did there. Unfortunately, unlike its predecessor, it was only available to people who purchased a Roblox gift card from a Canadian chain store called Shoppers Drug Mart in April of 2015. And then it was radio silence for four more years. No more book hats were published until 2017 and then 2019, when not one but two of them made their way onto the catalog. The only catch was that you would need to give Roblox money again in order to obtain them. Firstly, in 2017, we had the RU course catalog. This hat was packaged as an exclusive code item that came with the Roblox University student figure from the celebrity series 1 Mystery Figures boxes. It's currently selling on eBay for $15, but it doesn't have a code, so I would assume that a toy and code package deal would run you around $20. Personally, I think that that's a huge ripoff considering that the RU course catalog looks nearly identical to the 100 Robux Roblox U handbook, except actually slightly worse. But if you're a real diehard book hat collector, more power to you, I guess. Then we had the Roblox History book, which came out in 2019. No, it wasn't the long-awaited sequel to History of Roblox Volume 1. That still seems to be in the works. Roblox History book is a toy code item packaged with the Roblox History Museum sales staff toy in Series 6 mystery figures boxes. Nowadays, these things go around for 10 to 20 bucks. Again, a huge ripoff considering that you can get a perfectly cromulent Roblox History book for just 30 Robux, but if you really want it, more power to you. It's been almost three years now since the last book hat was published, and there hasn't really been any signs of the series reappearing on the catalog anytime soon. But sadly, that seems to also be true for pretty much every classic series nowadays, so I say that the book hat series had a good long life. And I use the word had very tentatively, because who knows, maybe one day Roblox will find a reason to resurrect that mesh once more. Book Mesh 2 was truly one of the most important meshes that Roblox ever created. To an outsider, it just looks like an unassuming grey brick, but to those who know about all the events it was responsible for, all of the artistic careers it started, and all of the general traditions that spawned around it, it's something much more. And personally, even if they stop making new ones, I don't believe that book hats will ever truly die. Thanks for watching everyone, I've been Lord Nitrous, and I'll see you all next week. Bye!